What is my name? My name is Jeannie Thompson. Uh, who's Matt? Dale Hunter. How long have I been at Loaves and Fishes? Um, about six years. 2000 was my entry into the food bank and have been involved since then. I've been involved about 18 years and I'm the board secretary for the food bank. The goal of Loaves and Fishes is to serve the poor of Carroll County. This is a fairly poor county and there's a lot of people here that are insufficient in terms of meeting nutrition requirements. And so we try to do that through our food bank. Loaves and Fishes is a nonprofit 501c3 organization that was founded in 1986. It began over 30 years ago as a very small operation, and it grew because of the need that we found in Carroll County. The, the food distribution program for adults at the food bank is, is based on um, government commodities, which, which we receive from the federal government on a regular basis. We also have donated food, which can be, can be very variable, uh, and there's also food that we purchase on the basis of, of having some, some uh, money donated to us for that purpose. So they'll come to the food bank and they're unable to provide for themselves. But in addition to that, there can be any number of reasons why people can't. Sometimes their income isn't adequate. Sometimes they simply have more people to feed at their house, more children or dependents than what they're able to cover on the basis of their income. Well, it depends on what we have, of course, but uh, today I'd say even a single person will go out with 30 pounds of food. We can let them go grocery shopping, and what we say about grocery shopping, we get uh, produce from the grocery stores in the area uh, three times a week. And that's, you know, lettuce and tomatoes and apples, and oranges, and bananas, and we've got some pineapple today. There are several ways that we get food. One is the USDA commodities, and another source, a good source of food, is our Tyson chicken plant. These folks have been wonderful to us. And uh, we back up to the Tyson plant with the 18 wheelers and load up chicken and bring it over and, and put it in our big walk-in freezers and we hand that out. Operation Food for Hungry Kids is a weekend food backpack program for hungry children in the Berryville and Green Forest schools. This was started in 2013 at the request of the Berryville school nurses who let us know that there were hungry children in the schools that needed some, um, some food assistance on the weekend. How a child would get added to the program would be um, either the parents could uh, could ask the schools to get them included in the program or uh, very often we'll have a nurse or a counselor or a teacher who will recognize that there's a need with that particular child. Our, our nutritional values that we're looking for, the goals that we're setting are um, about 3,500 calories in each backpack. Um, we are trying to, to minimize the sodium uh, and the sugars. Uh, we've got the sodium under control. The sugars are still a challenge to us because so much processed food is very high in sodium and sugar. Um, and we also shoot to have uh, quite a bit of protein in the bag. And um, with the exception of sugars, we've gotten things pretty well under control. The normal process for getting a backpack delivered in terms of the food that's going in, first thing I'll do is, is identify 
uh, a nutritional profile. And, and we've already talked about that a little bit, but it would be 3,500 calories, um, uh, under 110 uh, grams of sugar, um, uh, over 88 grams of protein. So very specific um, nutritional needs that I'm, that I'm identifying. Um, then I'm gonna go out and see what kinds of food I can get through the resources I've got that will help me meet that nutritional profile. And I'm always going to be looking for the, for the best buy. So sometimes I'll, I'll find a good deal on, on, on pinto beans, for example. Um, and so pinto beans are gonna go in the bag. Um, then I, um, uh, and, and I'll have quite a variety of food, so I'm not putting the same thing. The kids like a little bit of variety. I have a spreadsheet that's going to help me calculate um, what, what this mix of things in the bags is gonna do for me. I will schedule some volunteers to come in and help me pack the backpacks. We set up an assembly line and the volunteers will be told, put two of these in the bag, put one of these in the bag, put three of these in the bag, you know, whatever that combination is. And then, um, and then they'll be either staged uh, for Berryville to pick them up or we will arrange for a delivery time to Green Forest. And then within, and within that, um, once they're delivered, the schools are responsible for making sure that they're getting to the right child. While we have people who are interested in doing food drives, we can get about three times the bang for, for our buck um, as, as the average person can going out and buying food um, at Walmart. Well, of course, someone has to go to the upkeep of the building. We, we have a big walk-in freezers, and we have this bank of refrigerators and chest freezers. So in the summertime, our electric bill is over $500 a month. We have to pay for all that. Right now, our current issue is, is that we simply don't have the space. We don't have the space to hold the variety of foods that we need to hold. When we started our backpack program, we had enough room to kind of scrunch up a bit and fit that in. Well, now that program has grown, and so we simply don't have any more scrunch up room. Food Bank is planning to expand. We want to go out and put floor space for about 16 more pallets. And we have a web page up, and it's Berryville Loaves, the letter N, fishes.org. And it, there we have a PayPal application so you can donate on PayPal. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Loaves and Fishes Food Bank of the Ozarks and it also has information for donations. And so that, that expansion will help us there with the backpack program, and it will give us free up the space in between so that we can um, adequately do our TFAT program and provide salvage foods to supplement those USDA Anyone who's interested in volunteering at the food bank could, um, could contact us um, here at the food bank. Just come in and ask to help and we'll put them to work. Some of the jobs that volunteers do is, is to actually work behind the counter, delivering goods to, to our clients. Anytime you handle groceries or any kind of freight type things, there's always a lot of back-breaking labor in it all. It's unloading, reloading, packaging, handling the cases, uh, making runs with the vehicle, going and picking it up. In some cases, they, they do odd jobs like uh, make repairs to the facility. Um, there, are, there are lots of things that, that people can do here. I'd just like to say that I really appreciate this community and their willingness to support us and helping to meet a critical need in this community. And thank you, community. It's just a blessing. <laughs>